Piecewise functions are defined by multiple subfunctions, and each subfunction is defined over a specific interval or a certain portion of the domain of the main function. So in this example, we have a piecewise function f of x here. We're given the equation, and then we're also given the curve. And we want to kind of examine how the uh, curve relates to the actual function itself. So if we're looking at this first portion here, x squared minus 1 for x less than 2, that's uh, telling us that when x, the values of x are less than 2, so if we're looking to the left of 2, it, our graph itself is defined by this parabola. So you can see that this quadratic is shifted down 1, and it's only being graphed for x values that are less than 2. So for all values of x less than 2, the first function, x squared minus 1, is the graph that we use. Uh, so for the second portion, in here, uh, f of x equals 1 when x equals 2. So it equals 1 when x equals 2. Now this is an interesting one because normally when you have f of x equals 1 or y equals 1, that gives us a horizontal line. It says that for every x value, the y value is just this number. But in this specific case, we're just talking about when x equals 2. So at one singular x value, the y value is 2. So when x is 2, the value of our function is 1. And as a result, what that does is it gives us just a single point, right? So when x is 2, the y value is 1. So singular point of 1, uh, of 2, 1, right? The x value is 2, the y value is 1. And that's because it's only being defined there when x is equal to 2. And then the last one, the last piece that we use is for x values greater than 2, right? For x values greater than 2, we get this definition there, negative 2x plus 8. And that's going to be this line that we have here. So negative 2x plus 8 is defined for this last portion. And you can see that this function is defined uh, on the whole real number line, right? So all values less than 2, all values greater than 2, and at 2. Now, because this is uh, a function, piecewise function, our function has to pass the vertical line test. So it should pass the vertical line test. So that means that you need to be careful when looking at these domains that your curves don't overlap, right? Your curves don't overlap. So they're only defined for specific portions of this domain. So you can see that our quadratic is only for x values less than two, our linear is only for x values greater than two, and then we have that point there. Now in this portion here at x equals two, right, it might look like we have some uh, points that overlap, but because these are open, right, that means that our function is not actually defined there. It doesn't actually reach that point. And this is the only output that actually has comes from the input of 2. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at graphing some piecewise functions. So we're going to graph these two different piecewise functions. Each of them have two subfunctions. So if we're looking at part A, let's first graph this one, y equals x squared minus 2 for x less than or equal to 1. So this is telling me the subdomain that we're using. So it's happening for all x values less than or equal to 1. And our curve is going to be the quadratic function x squared minus 2. So this is just our normal parabola, our normal parent function, just shifted down two units. So instead of the origin, uh, instead of the vertex being at the origin, it's going to be here at 0, negative 2. And it's only being defined for values of x that are less than or equal to 1. So when x is 1, it would be here at negative 1 because it was shifted down two units. Uh, if x was 2, it'd be up here at 2. If x was 3, it'd be up here at 7. And then with symmetry, we would get these other points here like this. Now, um, all of the values to the right of x equaling 1 are not going to actually be on the definition of this curve because it's only being defined for values of x less than or equal to 1. So it's only going to be this portion here, so that portion there, and then up until 1. Now at 1, we have a closed point here because it's equal to 1. So it will be a closed point there. And then this will go on forever like this. Um, so the next portion of our graph is this linear equation, 2x minus 1 for x values greater than 1. 
Now, when x equals one, the graph of two x minus one doesn't actually exist, but it can be anything up until one. So we still draw our graph up to one, but the way that we signify that it doesn't equal one is at whatever the value is when x is one, if it was defined there, we put an open point there. So what would the value of this curve be if x was one? Uh, so two times one minus one, that's two minus one is one. So we would have a point here at one, one, but it's not actually defined there, so we're gonna put an open circle. But then we can draw the rest of our curve by just using the slope. So we can go up to right one, put a point there, up to right one, put a point there, and we can continue to follow that pattern, and we would get this line here. So that line is this portion here, and then this parabola is this top portion there. Okay, so let's take a look at this next example. So for this example, we have f of x equals four, and that's for x values between negative six and negative two. So if you remember f of x equals, f of x is just another name for y. So y equals four is just a horizontal line at four. But in this case, our horizontal line only exists in between x values of negative six and negative two. So the left bound of our um, x value would be negative six and the right bound of our x value for this horizontal line would be negative two. At negative six, because this is less than or equal to, we're gonna have a closed point. So at negative six, four, we are gonna have a closed point here. Um, at negative two, four, however, it's going to be open because that is just less than. So at negative two, four, we would have an open point here and we would get this horizontal line like this. And then the last portion of our graph is going to be this here. So it's an absolute value function and it's being defined for all x values greater than or equal to negative two. So this one left off at negative two, so it's just gonna kind of line up with this here. Um, this x value for our absolute value, it hasn't uh, adjusted the slope at all. It's still just the normal x equals one and x, or y equals x and y equals negative x for your slope, so one and negative one, but shifted down two units. So where the vertex would have been at the origin, it's now gonna be down here at zero, negative two. And the right side of this graph is still gonna be y equals x, that line. And it's gonna exist there forever. So it's gonna go like this. Um, so that's going on forever that way. And then the other portion of our graph goes from here. Well, let's see. This should shift over a little bit like this. Um, it's gonna look like this. And then at negative two, if I plug negative two in, that's being two minus two is zero. And it's gonna be closed because this is a greater than or equal to. So it's closed point there. Uh, and that would be the graph of this piecewise function. Evaluating piecewise functions. So to evaluate a piecewise function, we have to look at the value that we're trying to evaluate and then the domain definitions, right, for the different subintervals. So we ask ourselves negative two, does that fall into this subdomain or this subdomain? Is negative two less than three or is negative two greater than three? Negative two is clearly less than three. So that means that we're gonna use this portion of our function definition to evaluate this. So f of negative two is equal to five minus negative two. Uh, subtracting a negative makes this addition, so we would be plus there. Um, f of three, so f of three, so three, is that less than or equal to three or is it greater than three? Now in this situation, this is strictly greater than. So because it's strictly greater than three, three is not greater than three, it equals three. So again, we fall into that top definition there. So plugging into the top function, it's gonna be five minus three, which is two. And then the last portion, the last portion comes from uh, f of 4.5. So 4.5 clearly is bigger than three, so we're gonna be evaluating 4.5 in that second portion of our function. So it's gonna be 4.5 quantity squared plus one. Uh, 4.5, that's the same as nine halves. So nine halves squared is 
81 over 4. Um, 81 over 4, that's 20 and a quarter. So that's 20.25 plus 1 is 21.25. And then that would be how you evaluate. So if you're trying to evaluate piecewise functions, basically you look at the input and figure out which part of your uh, function definition, which interval it satisfies. Okay. In this portion, we want to write the equation of a piecewise function. And you can see here that we're trying to write it as, a, uh, as three different pieces. It looks like we could write this as four different uh, lines, but I'm gonna treat this middle portion as an absolute value. Um, and so I can use it as a single function definition. So I'm gonna do this graph first. So this portion of my graph here first, it's just a line. Um, where is it defined? So it's defined for x values in between negative six and negative three. So in between negative six and negative three is the x. Um, at negative six, we have a closed point. So that's gonna make this a less than or equal to sign. And then at negative three, it's open. So that's gonna leave this as just a less than sign. Now, because this is a, um, a linear equation, we need to find the slope. So up to right one, up to right one. So slope is two, slope is two. Uh, and if we wanna put this in slope intercept form, we need to find the y-intercept. And you could do this by writing like two x plus b, plugging in x and y and solving for b. But we could also just use the pattern of the slope to figure out the value of b. So I'm gonna continue the slope pattern. So up to right one, up to right one, up to right one, and see where it hits the y-axis. So it ends up crossing the y-axis at positive seven. So this would be y equals two x plus seven. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this middle portion here. So this middle portion is, I'm gonna uh, use a absolute value definition for this. So it goes in between negative three and positive two. So negative three, less than x, less than two. Uh, at negative three, it's a closed point, so it's gonna be less than or equal to. And then at positive two, it's an open circle, so it's gonna be strictly less than. Now, this curve is has a slope of one and negative one. Um, so negative one here and one here. So it's just our normal absolute value, so it's just the absolute value of x but it's been shifted up one unit. So that means we're gonna just add one to our absolute value there. And then lastly, we have this function here. It's just this horizontal line. And horizontal lines are determined by an equation y equals some number. This is just y. So what is the number? Well, the number is just five. So f of x equals five is gonna give us that part of our graph. But for what x values? Well, it's for everything to the right of two. So the way that we say that is we say that it's for x values that are greater than two. And because the point is closed, it's going to be greater than or equal to two.